Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and I actually just posted a video that you probably want to watch first. Um, it was about when to stop an Invisalign with MA case or when to stop a twin block case. And these are appliances that are used to grow little jaws, as well as do some other stuff. Um, that's for more severe overjet. Elastics, be it class two for overjet or class three for negative overjet are used for very mild situations, mild, mild. For best, you know, chance it's like one, two, three millimeters. You're not gonna, it's not gonna happen unless you have a lot of spaces for anything more than that. It's just not gonna happen. Remember, elastics are not growing jaws. If you think they are, they're not, they are not. All they're doing is canting and tipping the occlusal plane, canting, tipping the teeth. So if you have a situation like here, with the class three where it's maybe like edge to edge. Um, if you were really, really good um, with elastic wear um, in aligners or in braces, you could jump that bite um, as well as straightening the teeth and closing the spaces in the right direction. And same thing with overjet, you know, one, two, three millimeters of overjet um, in braces or in clear aligners, you could do with elastics. There's a million other ways to do it too. So elastics are usually actually my last resort just because there's a lot of side effects whenever you use elastics. And I definitely recommend, like I said, listen to my twin block video that I just posted five minutes ago um, first, because I go a little bit more into the biology of it and how it works and the history of it. But you should also listen to all the rest of, of my elastic videos. And unless you honestly really understand straight wire, this is, you can't understand elastics. And you shouldn't be doing elastics in Invisalign unless you understand straight wire. I'm not saying that you have to do straight wire cases. I'm saying that you have to fully understand it. Because a lot of you guys are just tossing elastics in cases, or the technicians are, and I'm just laughing. I'm like, that is not going to work. That is, there's no point in that. Or there's going to be more side effects if you do that. Remember, anytime you're putting an external force on, be it you know an elastics or something else besides the braces besides the clear aligners for every it's basic you know physics for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction so by introducing elastics you have to think about what are the other forces that are happening well you're getting extrusion force on the molars and you're getting a you know a tipping force here um, so other things are going to happen whether it be a bite opening or other things so other unwanted and unpredictable things are going to happen and a lot of times the clincheck is not going to predict that and you're going to be like whoa what happened and it's like because you did elastics and you shouldn't have um so yes never trust the technicians if you're going to get anything out of this video do not trust the clincheck do not trust the clincheck um if you're not sure about using elastics do not use them or ask your friendly orthodontist so i kind of diverse kind of got off track when to stop so Obviously, you're going to stop when you're done, right? So if you've listened to my other video, the one I posted five minutes ago on when to stop twin block, when to stop Invisalign with MA, um, obviously, I talk about muscle memory and deprogramming being a thing, much more of a thing with bigger jumps than this is a smaller jump. So you, because this is much more gradual, you shouldn't have as much muscle memory issues um, with elastics, although you do get some relapse. So Whereas I might get 20, 30, 40% relapse in an ME case or a twin block case, I might get 10, 20% relapse in a elastic case. Uh, so I'm always going to want to take it a little further than I think I need it because I'm expecting to have some relapse. So I'm going to stop a class two elastic. Once I get a solid class one, even maybe just a hair class three in a class two elastic case and the opposite. Um, in a class three elastic case, I want to have po positive overjet, no anterior contacts at the end, maybe even a full millimeter of positive overjet. Again, elastics only work when they're worn 24 hours a day for a long period of time. And there always is a little muscle memory, you know, in there. So expect a little bit of relapse. If the patient is not wearing them full time, they will not work. And remember, this is not growing a jaw, so don't expect to see something different in this FX ray. It's just canting or tipping the occlusal plane. So... Elastics are an extrusive nature, so they're always better in more of a deep bite case than in an open bite case in terms of the class two, class three. For class two, class three, I would much rather have um, them in an aligner situation, which has more intrusive forces, than in a braces situation, which has more extrusive courses, forces, so it's much better. You really want to consider case selection when you do this, um, definitely. Think, consider your cases, consider how big the overjet or the negative overjet is, consider if you actually 
want to have growth if the patient is growing you know look at the ceph look at the ceph numbers and you definitely should dig into the cephalometric playlist that i have on youtube also the other thing you might want to check out is my straight wire course and as well as my phase one course not trying to sell courses it is similar to the content that i have in youtube except for it's pared down to like absolutely what you need not a bazillion videos in random order and it's presented in a more logical sequence um because youtube's going to shuffle everything right so I kind of take you through the diagnosis, the treatment planning, the different appliances, all in a logical order. Um, it's about 13 or 14 hours of CE, and you do get 13 or 14 units of CE credit. It's a very affordable price. Prices are going up January 31st, 2024. That is in a month from when I post this. Um, they will be going up a certain percentage. Um, so do definitely sign up before then you have a year to finish the course. So I know it's 14 hours is a lot of hours to sit to listen to me talk, but you can, for the most part, you could probably do it in the car. Um, you don't, as you can see, most of my videos are not demo videos. And I do that purposely because I know a lot of you guys like the more podcast format. A lot of you guys complain that my videos are not more demo videos. And I tell you, Hey, look, these things I'm putting up for free. I'm taking my time. I'm paying for the infographics. I'm paying for the transcription services. Um, I'm paying for the editing. Um, you know, I'm a busy person. So each of these are costing me 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars to make. Um, and I get what, like a dollar back in Google revenue. <laughs> so I'm losing money on these um, ridiculous amounts of money as to the point where my <laughs> my business advisors and my uh, accountants are like, why are you doing this? You know, like, why do you spend so much money on these YouTube videos when you're not getting it back? I mean, occasionally I do get customers through my orthodontic consultancy company, Straight Smile Solutions. Um, and it's nice when I do sell a course or two to help cover it. So I do appreciate that. Um, so will I do these indefinitely? Probably not. There's going to be a point where, you know, I'm either going to run out of things to talk about or I'm going to get bored doing these. Um, but right now you guys are asking for these videos. So as long as you guys are giving me, you know, props and thanking me for them and you guys are buying my courses and helping me out occasionally purchasing a session or help with a case, then I'll keep making these videos. Um, you know, and also, I mean, ultimately my goal is to leave a positive thumbprint. Um, I do love it when I go to a convention and someone says, thank you so much. I learned, you know, maybe I couldn't afford to take a bunch of courses, but your stuff was free. And I really appreciate that you had good and unbiased education out there. And that is something you have to keep in mind that 90% of the orthodontic courses that are out there are sponsored by an aligner company or someone that makes a product. Um, I don't make a product, so I have nothing to I mean, obviously, I'm super impartial in what I post. It's just an orthodontist with 20 years experience telling you how they use things and how to get from A to Z most efficiently. And that is my goal is to teach you really good orthodontics just because these courses are so biased that are out there. And I'm not going to name them because sometimes when I name them, some of these companies come after me. But it's just so wrong, the stuff they're teaching you. And, and I have, you know, in my history, I've been asked to lecture. I've been asked to lecture for different products. And these CEOs will force you in these contracts to say certain things. And if you don't say exactly what they say, and, and ultimately I've had to leave as, you know, a KOL and other stuff because I'm like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to promote your product. I'm not going to lie. So they will force you, you know, well, this is how you should say it. You know, like, well, I don't feel comfortable saying that because I don't believe this is true. The literature does not support it. So I'm not an unethical person. So yes, there might be some content out there. Um, you know, hopefully most, I think most of it's been taken down. I forced them to take it down where they've, you know, tried to sue me for not saying certain things. So there's a few companies out there. Um, so yeah, I don't do that stuff anymore. But um, live and learn, right? Anyways, I digress. But that's why I think that you should really be careful and not take these courses that are sponsored by an aligner brand or a certain type of product that teach you more about interceptive orthodontics or about aligners. You should only work with independent doctors. And the best way to learn orthodontics, be it phase one, be it straight wear, be it um, aligners, is to do the best way to learn is to do have someone there to help you out. If it's not me, then pick somebody else. I have a couple doctors I work with who are orthodontists that are amazing. Our styles are different. Mine is less literature based, more you know practical based. My goal is to get you from A to Z in the quickest amount of time, in the healthiest way, in the most efficient way. And the 20 years experience I have really helps out. I, I can get you there. And I can also tell you when not to take a case, when you're going to get yourself up a stream without a paddle, when it's definitely a surgical case and when to punt that case to an orthodontist if it's beyond you know, your skill set. All right, thanks so much.